Let's get started. J.C. Sherbert. Woo! 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 Well, it's been buzzing loudly all weekend. The passion of the crowd in Williams Bryce Stadium is second to none. And the raid breaks out in Columbia. It is good! Gamecock fans, welcome home. See how it goes, uh, but we'll be ready to go. It's time to root. Let's go, Carolina! It's gone! Touchdown! What a hit! He makes it in! Can you believe it? Gamecocks have won this game! Here are your hosts, J.C. Sherbert. Oh, watch him celebrate now. Bill Molinax. My wife doesn't like hanging around losers. And Jamie Bradford. I'm going to tell you, you look like you joined Doug Dynasty. Oh, yeah. All right, greetings and good morning. Morning. Welcome aboard and welcome home inside the Gamecocks, the show live from the Sinorama Studios and built by the Barndo Co., the Barn Dominium Company, the Barn Dominium Co.com. If you have not been watching our show for a while, first of all, welcome back. 
Uh, if you have, you've seen what they do in their commercials that air on our programming. And if you want to see more, head to their website, thebarndominiumco.com. They are one of the United States' top-rated builders, and they are unbelievable what they do. And it's something you've never seen, that is for sure. Uh, make sure you check them out and make your dream a reality. By the way, they are also Gamecock-owned and operated. So are we, JB, JC, and Phil. We're here until 1 o'clock this afternoon, and we will be joined in about 25 minutes by the Golden Pipes of Mike Morgan with pretty much every outlet in the country. I'm not even going to name them all because he does work with everyone now, and uh, that would take up way, way, way too much time. Uh, can't wait to talk to him. Clearly, plenty of baseball to discuss. It's it's time. You know, the regular season will end here in the month of May, and then we'll turn our attention to conference tournaments, and then right into regionals we will go. And uh, Mike certainly has his fingers on the pulse of college baseball. He obviously has his fingers on the pulse of college football as well. Did get a chance to call a couple of uh, spring games. I think one of them was LSU, by the way, where he had a chance to meet with Brian Kelly down in Baton Rouge. So we will uh, get into some football discussion uh, with him, of course, as well. He is also uh, the co-host of this uh, little-known podcast out there. Actually, it's, it's very well-known now. It's sweeping the nation at an alarming rate. It's called J.C. and Morgan. And if you haven't listened to that, uh, the gentleman on the left side of your screen co-hosted with Mike Morgan. So certainly looking forward to getting Mike in here in just a little while as well. We're going to really open up the chat box today, too, and make sure that we can talk to all of you. We have not had much of a chance to answer a lot of your questions, but there's already a few of them in there. And uh, so we'll make sure we get to those. We'll continue to look and uh, look down the road at the transfer portal and in recruiting. The portal is closed, but you can still, if you're in it, you don't have to be committed and signed somewhere. You can still do so. So we'll get into all that. And what is South Carolina's path to a top eight national seed look like at this point in time as uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, turned the calendar into the month of May? Plus, we do have a little bit of a look back at the Carolina Rise event that happened in North Mount Pleasant this past weekend that hopefully all of you will enjoy. With that being said, Keith Alsep's brother joins us as well, Phil Molinax and J.C. Sherbert here on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon where the weather is absolutely perfect in the state of South Carolina. What's up, guys? Uh, I think another... Uh, You're the cock brother. The cock brother? Wow. To the cock father, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Hey, look, I had to go to the paint store this morning. I've been sniffing paint fumes all day. So, so that means you'd be apologize. like the cock uncle. The cock uncle. Uh, <laughs> for it to his do uh, yeah. So, yeah, the cock uncle. Uncle, That's Uncle Cock. Oh, hey. <laughs> uncle Cock. <laughs> nice to see you. That's like the porn <laughs> version of Uncle, uncle Bob. Till, but uh, I don't know about the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. Sorry, man. I had to do something at somebody. <laughs> We yeah, picked Mike on JC the, enough yesterday, so I that's right. This is true. Work. This is true. Yeah. It's time for me to, yeah. to, to be the subject. <laughs> Everybody's got to bend over and take it once in a while, right? From the <laughs> cock right. uncle. That's right. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, you know, Mike did do LSU, but another one I think our listeners are going to find interesting to, to to talk about is North Carolina. He did the North Carolina spring game too. Yes. That's so right. he's got. Thank you for. Um, you. That's the opening game so to speak so now that spring ball is over and all that that's the next thing everybody's got to look forward to so uh yeah. talk tar heels tigers <clears throat> um or you know bayou Bengals, i guess so many mm -hmm. tigers out there the bayou Bengals. Mm -hmm. uh with mike baseball all that all's good we have a good episode coming up we interviewed tim couch uh yesterday of kentucky football fame had a little technical snafu, so I haven't quite gotten that loaded yet. <laughs> but uh, it'll be loaded by the time um, the afternoon rolls around. Certainly, uh, we appreciate everybody listening to JC and Morgan. It, it's a different deal than what we talk about every day. It's big picture stuff. Tons of guests. Uh, Tom Luganbill, Tim Brando, they're kind Luke. of regulars. Uh, mm. Yeah, Luke, Luke's is good. Luke's is coming back to discuss NIL. He's got a lot of good things to say about that. A lot of big picture stuff. Uh, while we were on yesterday, they, they came out with the schedule for the 12-team college football playoff in 2024. Very interesting. They're going to have 
first round games the week before December and then quarterfinals around New Year's. And then I guess the semis are going to be kind of the <clears throat> the same time that the championship game uh, is now around uh, January 9th, to something like that. Championship game, January 20th. So right. the college football season will not end until January 20th, which, which is fine with me. I mean, sure. you're going to play NFL football till the middle of February, play college till the end of January. I don't care. Let's make that a football month, you know, because certainly uh, I'd rather have it than not. But um, <clears throat> uh, good stuff uh, coming up for Mike, I'm sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Lots of talk out there. Uh, I'm looking at the Nana Sports chat box right now. Gamecock Barbecue would love to bring BAW home. Bryson Allen Williams. Yeah, if he, I mean, Shaq Wilson left, he would be replacing him. He's an analyst. We need a linebackers coach. Shaq didn't coach linebackers. Uh, I think the, the the consistent drum of we need, we need a linebackers coach is like overblown completely. I think it's like one person had that big opinion or two people had that big opinion. Uh, and then, you know, it, it's grown like wildfire. Do I think it could optimize the staff a bit? Yes. Do I think an analyst is going to solve an, an, any sort of small issue there is with it? No. Uh, I think the issues at linebacker have been, number one, injuries. Uh, people don't want to talk about that because they always want to blame a coach or blame a setup or, you know, do an easy fix with personnel. But, you know, bottom line is the best linebacker on this team the last two years running has gotten injured in the first two games of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, number two, youth. You've got a lot of young players out there because, you know, quite frankly, there, there were some misses in recruiting previously. And then number three, um, it's uh, it's probably talent to a certain extent because your more talented guys are younger and they're not going to play that well when they're young, as we all know. If you know anything about linebackers and all, we want to know why Stone Blanton looked slow last year. It's because he's never played. And when you play that position, you have to be instinct. I mean, you got to split second yep. or you're dead. And so I'm just tired of hearing about, oh, they need a linebackers coach over them. And it's just as like, you know, I get it. Uh, you know, do I think if you could do anything you want in an ideal world, you know, unlimited coaches? Yeah, sure. It'd be great. But the reason linebackers are struggling is not because Clayton White's coaching linebackers. I mean, that, that, it's just, it's one of the, it's kind of like the whole Arkansas thing. Ah, uh, they're going to fire Monterey Hardesty and bring in this guy from Arkansas and Rocket Sanders is coming. It's ridiculous. It's one of those things that I just wish, you know, in our market, people could kind of just let things like that die and be truthful. Not not necessarily they're lying, but just kind of pump the brakes on some of this stuff because some of our great fans and loyal listeners in the audience just take it and run with it like it's fact and like it's a huge deal. And it's not. It's not. So anyway, there you go, well, Blue Nation. Well, well, I mean, but but also, uh, you can't. It's it's not that easy. You only get eleven on field coaches. So you, who are you going to fire? Who are you getting rid of? You know, like if you were like, you know what, we just need a true linebackers coach. All right, well, you know, well, let's, that, you know, if you want to have some fun with it, all right, Jody Wright, you want to ask him to take a hike? Lonnie Teasley, Justin Step, Travian just got here. I guess I can get rid of him. Uh, Sterling, Ontario Hardesty. The you know people I know people that's a, another popular thing. Let's bang on Ontario. And this, by the way, is not it. It I'm not saying yeah, that to Bruin just, Nation. Just that's like I mentioned, it. I, I'm, people I'm had him replaced last year. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, let's get rid of him. Hire a linebackers coach. Okay. And now you don't have a running backs coach. Um, so none of that solves any of your 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 problems. Yeah. So I mean, the, I mean the thing, the, like I mentioned, that you know, briefly there was some consideration to. All right, let's let Sterling have the whole D line, but you know. Thankfully, in the opinion of Beamer and everybody else, the key to upgrading your program was to hire Travian Robertson, not to go find some linebackers kept somewhere. Uh, and uh, and I think that, but we keep talking about it. But and, and look, Brew Nation, Shaq Wilson wasn't coaching linebackers. Now we could debate whether that was good or not, but so whoever replaces him is probably not coaching linebackers anyway. Uh, and that's an, that, those are all analysts. Now, the there's some talk the NCAA may start letting analysts actually coach, and, and then that's a different story. But look, man, I, I just I, I, I think the linebacker. I'm, I'm tired of hearing about that position. I'm tired of hearing people trash players. 
I'm tired of having people blame everything under the sun, uh, blame them on the run, them and the D line on the running game. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and I just, I don't know. Something just struck me about that as uh, maybe a little feisty this morning or, or something. I, I just don't know. <laughs> Sean says, does Sterling look as coach outside linebackers and DNs? No, they call it. Okay, so there's two linebackers in this system, a Will and a Mike. And Clayton White coaches both of those. Now, at times, they'll switch to like a, a, an odd front where they do stand up what's, what they also call the buck, just like Will Muschamp. And that's basically a weak side end or a standing end. Uh, that's a, that's Jordan Strawn's position. That's where Gilbert Edmond played last year. Uh, so that's technically outside backers or whatever. But he's Sterling's basically the DN's coach or the edge coach, as they like to call it now. And then Clayton White coaches the actual pure linebackers. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that's the deal there. Uh, Cam asked about <clears throat> rumblings or rumors of an edge in the portal. Any truth to these? Yes. Oh, yeah. Major truth. That's it. Lots, lots of truth. Yes, and I'm not saying anything else about it because I'm not going to sit there and name the name because people will go nuts and all this good stuff. Yeah. Uh, by the way, JC, Cam, uh, Cam, it was really nice to meet you on Saturday. By the absolutely. Way. What, what a pleasure. What a cool, cool guy. So cool really dude. appreciate you saying hello. Thank you. You know, uh, Ryan says, "JC, quick question: Do you think there's ever a chance Dennis Thomas gets to come to Columbia, coach under Brad, coach Travy and Ingram, Cloudy Taylor, etc." I mean, look, I'm a Dennis Thomas guy. I'm a fan. I liked when he was here as a GA. I like him personally. Just hadn't heard his name, you know, associated with any openings, but there hasn't been a lot of openings. So, you know, someday uh, I know Beamer knows him. And I, I, like I said, I got a lot of respect for him. I think he's really good. Um, so that's the deal there. Sean asked how close oh, I am to the NASCAR street race. Not close. That's downtown. And I wouldn't. You could not pay me enough money to go downtown while that thing's going on. Uh, no, I thought they were talking Scott, about. I thought they were talking about the football <clears throat> team on the electric bikes on Saturday. <laughs> nah, this is like cool. a NASCAR street race in downtown Chicago, and even people in Chicago think it's a yeah, it's a bad idea, you know. And so we'll see. Sort of. Uh, That's an opportunity for criminals. Sort of. By the way, oh, uh, yeah, well, Marcellus Dial get out of town. <laughs> Yeah, quickly <laughs> and not come back, JC. Uh, Marcellus Dial told me the other day he got his bike up to 26 miles per hour, FYI. Wow. I don't know if we should be saying that publicly. Somewhere Beamer's probably falling out of his chair. Like, oh, no. <laughs> well, uh-huh. wait, now, wait a second, Shane. You had your guys running on the street against a, a freaking radar. <laughs> These guys are riding a bike. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Um uh, yeah, Don't think that was that. Highway 17 they were running on, JB. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, that's true. No, they weren't. To their credit, they weren't actually going that fast on 17. They were on a side street, but well, you can't was, go that fast on 17. So it's <laughs> not anymore. No, nope. what's what's the speed limit? 45. I'll go 20. Okay, that's kind of how they. Uh, hey, I went uh, leaving Isle of Palms the other night. I went about 25. Probably a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, very smart of me because uh, you, you you roll through all over the bridge and there's three or four cops just sitting there. Oh yeah. Now thank you know they were very polite. They had their lights on so you could see. You know, oh, well, maybe yeah, they should slow down. Oh yeah, they were being real polite. Yeah, but that was that was nice of them. But uh, you know all that. Will says, uh, "Ask what time Travian's introduction press introduction press conference is today." It's at five. Yes. So, and that's good. I, and I like that about Beamer. You know, Beamer does a good job of what he hires a new assistant coach. I think Muschamp did this, but maybe did it in waves. But uh, he'll bring him out and let him talk to the media. Shoot, he's talking to media boys. He's already coach. he's already uh, on the website. They've already put put everything up there. So love it. He's. I mean, that's, that's just been a, introduced. I can't say enough about that that big time. The guy Clint asked is the mystery guy you're speaking of. Maybe, maybe when he when will he make an announcement? I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. When it happens, it'll happen. I've said all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, Xavier, have we replaced Shaq Wilson yet? I don't know unless there's some under the radar. Because what they don't do is announce things like the new nutritionist and uh, new analyst and, and things like that, unless it's like a, like a Freddie Kitchens type of name or something. Um, I just know that, like, I feel better about the edge position right now than at any point. Um, and that's without Jordan Birch. Uh, I, I said last night, it's not Jordan. I can't 
throw water on that completely. I know he's not in the portal, but I mean, who knows? There, that 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 situation speculating on my end right now is not as easy as get in portal, go back. So right. the portal probably doesn't even play a factor with this uh, when it comes to Jordan Birch, not, not Dylan Brooks, not. And you guys can you guys can say every, you can name every defensive end in the country. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it. Well, let's start. Uh, and hey. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be rude. I, I just because you know talk, what brother. I hit I hit around I hit around about it. That then you know competition. You want to call them competition. You want to call them whoever. You know, other outlets, they're going to sit there and try to play connect the dots. They're going to put out something that's either accurate, which is not good, because nobody wants this name out. Nobody wants the name out there. Or, or number two, it's not going to be accurate, and that's not good either, because then when they don't get that guy, half the audience or fan base is going to blame the coaching staff, which is pathetic as well. So it's I, I did it because I, I feel like I owe my audience, my readers, whatever, uh, some comfort when uh, when it's uh, you know time to give you comfort uh, about that specific position, but I'm not going to get into specifics. You know I, you're going to have to take my word for it. Be comfortable. <laughs> All right. So so there's that there. Uh, Joey Bosa. Yeah, that's definitely it. R. L. E. Yes, <laughs> Joey Bosa. That's right. Actually, that's Joey Bosk. Um, that would be uh, Joey Bosa's. <laughs> cousin it's 11 20 let's hit a timeout because we want to try to get both in before mike morgan uh so we can extend him since he's coming up at 11 30 so we'll step aside and we'll continue to answer questions from the nano sports chat box when we were when we return on inside the game cox the show powered by electric bikes of charleston Family vacations, a new car, a new boat, all cost money, but you don't necessarily have to make more to afford any of that if you can save cash that's flying out the window now. iHelp Consulting can help you finally get the kids to Disney World, upgrade the minivan, or drop that new boat in the water next summer. Let Daniel and iHelp Consulting consult with you. No fees, just savings. You pay them a percentage of those savings. Save on essential services, credit card fees, you name it. Let them find it. These folks are incredible. iHelpConsulting.com. How can I help you? Just as your State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home, auto, life, or small business insurance with Tony Pope State Farm Insurance today. And guess what you'll get? That's right, even more good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, Tony Pope State Farm is your go-to agent anywhere in South Carolina, North Carolina, or Georgia for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try combining your home, life, auto, and or small business insurance today. Tony Pope State Farm has been in business for more than 30 years and can handle anything you need in the tri-state area. Once again, Tony Pope State Farm will help you mix and match perfectly. Call 843-851-2222 or visit TonyPope.com today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The real estate market has changed dramatically from just a year ago. Rates, supply, demand, all of your traditional factors are in a transition phase. That's why if you or someone you know are considering making a move in the low country, contact me, JB, at Coast to Coast Realty. I work with an outstanding support cast of attorneys, lenders, inspectors, insurance agents, and more, all of whom are valuable in helping find a way for you to comfortably make your real estate decision. That's right. Call me, JB, your low country real estate broadcaster. Building your dream home is often just that, a dream and sometimes a nightmare. But at the Barndo Company, they commit to quality and build without sacrifice. Customization, open floor plans, limitless flooring options, maintenance-free and easy insulation perks, and affordability are just a few reasons why they've been named one of the best builders in the U.S. Believe in your dreams. Visit thebarndominiumco.com. That's thebarndominiumco.com. The Barndo Company. Gamecock owned. Gamecock operated. Traveling to cheer on the Gamecocks? Reserve your hotel stay with Fan Plans. Your booking supports inside the Gamecocks and the Big Spur, plus you still earn your hotel loyalty points. Visit fanplans.com slash inside the Gamecocks. What's up, Gamecock Nation? This is Ja'Kai Moore from the DMV, and you are listening to the show.
Welcome back, everybody, to Inside the Gamecocks, the show presented to you by Express Sunrooms of Columbia. Give John and his team a call at 803-446-4662 to talk about how they can add some sunshine into your life this summer. And, of course, first hour of the show is brought to you by Cindy Searfoss and the Coldwell Banker Kane Realty team here in the upstate. Give Cindy a call at 864-414-5271. She'll be happy to help you with all your residential real estate needs. Uh, only if only a few minutes in a short segment here. So we want to try to you, we usually we always go over with Mike. So we want to try to make sure that we extend that yeah. as, as much as possible. Let me give some uh, anybody who's headed to Florida. Let me give you a quick update on something, and then I'll tie this into what the worst job in the world sounds like it must be. Uh, if you're headed down towards uh, Jacksonville on 301, uh, careful because a truck crash and over a million there were one million bees on board and they escaped. So there are bees like like bees like, like bees like, like they're going to sting you bees like those type bees that have gotten away and they're covering Florida and uh, they're trying to recover them. I don't I don't know if you're doing that. So here's my question, though. How did you have one million bees like who who drew the short straw that had to count? Nine hundred thousand nine hundred and ninety one, nine hundred thousand nine hundred and ninety two. How did you know there's a million bees on board? I mean, come on, man. Like, <laughs> that's got to be the worst job in the world. This is a guy having to receive it. You know, the boss is like, all right, you made sure there were all a million there, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty sure I got them all. Sure. Pull them out. <laughs> Check them again. <laughs> oh gosh! So if you're headed to Jacksonville and you feel a little bite or a little sting somewhere, that's gosh. that's what happened. Where are all these bees coming from? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh no! Bees. I can hear Tommy Boy now. They're ripping my flesh off. They're ripping Save off my off. flesh. Save ah. yourself. I'm allergic, I'm allergic to, bees. to bees. Me too. <laughs> I probably, in my younger years, thought about trying that a couple times, but I never got pulled over. So, <laughs> not my one. Save yourselves. <laughs> bees. Oh, yeah, my dude. God. A million bees. Man. Anyways, Man, that's awful. By the way, it's uh, not the they first were native, time. though. Shoot, geez, you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where they were going. It's not the first time. Uh, a crash has left unexpected debris on Florida roads. Throughout the years, there's been loads of items that have ranged from cow poop to $180,000 in coins that somehow got spilled in Miami. So there is your news of man. the day. Yeah. It's, yeah. A road of it's a road of adventure. <laughs> 995 is. I mean, could you imagine Probably. driving through a bunch of cow, you know what, and it getting all up on your car and you uh, – I used to live in, Spart in Spartanburg when I was a kid. We lived in a place called Moore, M O O R E. Y'all, y'all all know Moore. It's kind of Moore. not even. A, it's not a town. It's more of an area. There is a post office, two nine three six nine, uh, and we lived near a bunch of cow uh, dairy farms. And during the summer, man, you'd walk outside and it was ripe. It was ripe. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I worked on a farm and. Had to work in a chicken coop for four summers as part of that work on the farm. And Yikes. you learn a lot of things that you will never do again. Uh, I don't know if working in some uh, on farms sometimes tells you what it, what you want to do in life, but it certainly can tell you what you don't want to do in life. No, there's At a chicken processing probably. plant up the road from where we live. And yeah, I'd have to be pretty desperate. <laughs> to walk yeah. in the air <laughs> and yeah, ask for a job. Things have <laughs> really got to be grim, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've told you about those chicken processing plants, man, the whole process. In Gainesville, Georgia, they call it the chicken city because they have, it's like tight. There's two big Tyson plants or something there. It smells like bunghole most of the time. And oh, it's, uh, and you get to see Phil. the chickens and they're suffering. He's been working on this whole Beavis and Butthead thing, man. He's getting closer and closer to throwing Coach O out the door and just going straight into Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, he's now he's slipped in the bunghole thing. 
I mean, um, he's. <laughs> I see. I see what's happening here. <laughs> it's a bunghole. <laughs> yeah, bunghole. Yeah, that's right. No yeah, yeah, bunghole chicken. <laughs> see. I, I, I'd like an order of bunghole chicken, please. <laughs> he said Phil, and, chicken. Phil and Radio, they have this thing called the dump button. Yeah, right. Yes. You, you've got the mute button, right? Okay. All right. Just want to make sure. Problem is, JC has access, so he can turn it back on. Yeah, it's like I could mute y'all, but you can turn your turn your audio back on. Yeah, that's right. Oh man, these guys are killing it. Uh hats off to RLA. Everyone in Jacksonville Jacksonville should be careful. I'll see myself out. <laughs> that's, boy. That's epic, epic. Yeah. Well done, my man. Well done. I didn't realize Shut big honey was a head thing, to, but there it was. Head to the uh, gas station, buy a lotto ticket, a coke and a smile. You have earned it. Gotta All spray right. the bees because they suck. <laughs> Is Mike yeah, in yet, suck. Phil, or no? Uh, yes, he is actually okay. right. not let's, his let's, face, but just his. That's uh, all right. Let's hit that timeout, and yeah, uh, cool. then when we come back, uh, Beavis Schubert can uh, introduce Mike Morgan here on Inside the Gamecocks, the show uh, built by the Barndo Company. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for a karaoke partner, I can tell you, I can't carry a tune in a bucket. But what I do have is a very specific set of skills. Hang up now, and your IT nightmares will continue. But stay on the line, and I will find you. And when I find you, I will fix it. Um, thanks. Uh, I think I have the wrong number. I'm trying to call Matt at Heritage Digital. He has a one-price, low-cost turnkey solution for all my IT needs, and I'm sick and tired of my IT guy. So, yeah, 843-699-1001. This is 1002. Oh, well, thanks anyway. Don't be taken by some IT dude that talks a big game. Give Matt at Heritage Digital a call, 843-699-1001. Golfers and wannabe golfers, former Gamecock golfer Meredith Taylor is now a full-time golf instructor in the Midlands of South Carolina. In-person golf lessons are held at the Country Club of Lexington. Half hour, hour, on course nine or 18 holes. And if you're outside of South Carolina, Meredith conducts virtual lessons. Just send in your golf swing for analysis. Gift cards are available for in-person one-hour lessons. Connect on Twitter at Mayor Taylor and find her online at McKellarEnterprises.org. Her email is on the website. Schedule your next lesson today with Meredith Taylor, former Gamecock golfer. <laughs> Hey Gamecock fans, it's Evan Stowe from Gamecock Baseball. A couple of painters paint the show Garnet and Black every day and get the job done right at a fair cost. Go to LetMePaintSomething.com for information and an estimate. Go Cox! You heard Evan Stone Gamecock fans 10% off for military repeat customers or mention the show. Interior, exterior painting, fencing, cabinet staining, concrete painting, popcorn ceiling removal, and more. 803-522-6832. LetMePaintSomething.com You know, no, no. From the littlest chick to the big old cock, it's a gift. Here comes the quest. Danny Hill. Spurs, Spurs, Spurs. He'll run. He just took down. Oh, watch him celebrate now. Go top of the pool. Star of the show. You're a rooster who was born in the pool. Well, I bet you want to win. There he is. Anybody else? ever feel old when you see that those clips of Steve Tannehill you know yeah he uh, I was in yeah. high school <laughs> yeah he uh I, I saw him year. where did I see him saw him at, um, no yeah, I it mean a, well it probably. had to be at the ballpark I mean I think he, he, he can't, I don't I saw him in Columbia not too long ago anyways I don't know mm. doesn't matter we have Mike Morgan the rest of that stuff is that's it for another day, it doesn't we've got, matter. We've got the golden pipes of. I know Steve. He's. I love Steve, man. He's I used great. to have Steve on my show. He's calmed he, down uh, a lot, hasn't he, Mike? He has, but he still has that competitive streak. And oh, yeah. uh, you know, all those guys, they can play it off like they don't care where their place in history is, but they do. I remember one time I was talking to him, and I said, "Well, Steve, you've got m most of the records." uh of all time i guess the only one you don't have is 
total passing yards. You have the record for, you know, yards per attempt and yards per game and touchdown interception ratio. And I said, but I guess the one that, and he said, yeah, I don't hold the record for interceptions either. <laughs> <laughs> that will never be broken. That, that will never, never be broken. 73 <laughs> will be awfully hard oh, to beat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh, hurt me. Hurt but me, Mike. Oh. It, was, it was like. Damn! I mean, Tannehill just came off the top rope. <laughs> Man, I didn't yeah, realize dude. I was walking into something there, but apparently I did. <laughs> wow! Well done, Steve-O. That's a nice, nice touch. By the way, you have a secret admirer, Brian Beatty. S. Who is this hunk? Unless you talk about JC. <laughs> but clearly, that's said that ever about before. JC. So, yeah. That's right. Clearly, that's a JC uh, fan. <laughs> I well, am man. prettier than this man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was um, uh, that's from Braveheart, by the way. Mike, we'll, we definitely want we'll get into some baseball with you, but uh, JC just mentioned it a little while ago. You got to call the North Carolina spring game, Gamecocks Open, with the Tar Heels in Charlotte. What'd you see? Well, you know, I had North Carolina and LSU in back to back weeks, and two things stand out. Number one, LSU is a dramatically more talented team. Um, it's kind of funny, like when you when you see two teams and we had incredible access for those spring games um, and you just stack up athlete per athlete. And look, I'm not sitting there with a stopwatch and, and measuring guys vertical leap and uh, looking at thousands of hours of tape. But it just it's the eye test. I mean, it's you just you just look at the athletes on defense for LSU and then you look at what North Carolina has and it's. It's night and day, and that's not a knock on North Carolina. LSU is going to be – I wouldn't be surprised if LSU wins the West again. Don't be surprised if they go to Tuscaloosa uh, and have something for the tie this year. Alabama has a quarterback issue right now. I realize they just plucked uh, the young man out of Notre Dame out of the portal, but uh, LSU does not have a quarterback issue with Jaden Daniels, nor do they have wide receiver issues, nor do they have running back issues, nor do they have defensive issues. Like, they're stacked. Um, and, and this just in Brian Kelly's a hell of a coach, North Carolina, the Drake may is absolutely real deal. He will be a top three pick in the draft next year. Could be number one. That'll, that'll, that'll change 20 times between now and next year's draft. Um, but they have a quarterback that is next level that they lost. Josh Downs went in like the third round. Um, that was that was their playmaker. That was their everything. So they've got some nice wide receivers, but I don't think it's anybody that the Gamecocks are going to go, oh, no, what do we do for this guy? I, I don't see a game breaker yet. Um, they've got good backs, but, again, they don't have a guy that is going to scare uh, the Gamecocks' defense, I don't think. I mean, it really just is going to come down to, is it going to be a shootout? where it's going to be Drake May, touchdown drive, and then Spencer Rattler, touchdown drive, and touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Is it going to be that kind of game, track meet, or is it going to be a little more physical game? And if it becomes a more physical game, I do think that favors the Gamecocks. I will say this. I mean, from Mac Brown on down, they all in Chapel Hill are saying, we know the soft label has been on us and we are going to do everything we have to do to get rid of that label. In other words, we're not going to be this finesse team anymore. We are going to get after you now. Uh, and Phil Longo is gone, which Wisconsin, which is a really weird fit, if you ask me. Uh, and they have an offensive coordinator now that's more in the lines of, of, of a phys more physical team, more complimentary football and talking about Philip Lindsay. Um, and, uh, and then defensively with, you know, I still have, I'm still a believer in Gene Chizik. Um, he certainly is going to have a lot of eyeballs on him this year, how he does. They did play better on defense at the end of last year, but, uh, and they made it to the ACC championship game. But of course, now there's no more divisions in that league. Um, but it remains to be seen whether or not they have a championship level defense in, in Chapel Hill. They're like, where, where are the again? Where are the game breakers? Who are going to be the players that you really have to game plan against? That's a long answer to your question, but yeah. have at it. Well, it's May, Mike. I mean, this is the like you know, 
I, I always think of Brad Crawford this time of year because I feel like he puts out the most controversial lists in college football. And that's his job, right? Is to put out all these lists that everybody's going to bitch and complain about over the next few months. And then, you know, they actually finally start playing football games and we actually get to, you know, talk about things that really matter, not who's the post spring top 25. It's just for banter. Uh, and I'm not saying that offensively towards Brad at all. That's literally his job is to do that. Um, so uh, at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff doesn't matter. But when you when you look ahead, because you know, South Carolina's got a they got a pretty good quarterback too. His name's Spencer Rattler. How do these two guys compare? You've seen them both in person. How do they compare? Uh, and by the way, I think I said uh, Philip Lindsay. That's an NFL running back. Chip Lindsay is the the yeah the new coordinator in Chapel Hill. Uh, look, I, Spencer Rattler showed me a ton at the end of last year, so I have become a fan of of Spencer Rattler, and I think it's huge to have him back for another year in Columbia. Uh, he's a he's a special talent. There's no doubt about it. So in, in the college game, could he outplay Drake May on that opening uh, game on, on Saturday in Charlotte? Absolutely, he could. Uh, from an NFL scouting standpoint, there's very few quarterbacks that have the arm talent of a Drake may. Uh, oh, by the way, Drake did lead the team in rushing last year. It's, it's wrong to think he's a statue. He had nearly 900 yards on the ground last year. He's an athlete. Crazy. Yeah. He's an, I mean, his brother, look, his brother played on the national championship basketball team. His father was a former quarterback for the Tar Heels. His mom was an athlete. I mean, it is just a real athletic family. So he has, everything that NFL scouts kind of drool over, right? It's going to be him and Caleb Williams and the Penix kid that are going to lead the way for all the, the, the quarterback draft hype um, this, this coming year. So, I mean, I can sit here and tell you Drake May is certainly a better NFL prospect and not many people on the planet are going to debate that. It doesn't mean that he, he can't be outplayed by Spencer Rattler. If Spencer Rattler plays the way he did against Tennessee, the way he did against Clemson, um, and those, by the way, are, are better defenses than what you're likely going to see in Chapel Hill this year. There's no reason to think that Spencer Rattler can't just go off in that game. Uh, absolutely. In fact, I lean toward it's going to be a shootout is what I lean toward. I think defenses sometimes take a few weeks to really get into the groove of tackling and hitting and especially the way we kind of coddle these guys now. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's a high-scoring game where both quarterbacks really shine. Yeah, I uh, man, I can't wait for this game. I it's I, I what I'm really interested to see is who's better up front between these two, because I mean, J we just spent a bunch of time with South Carolina is basically they're starting offensive line, JC, this weekend. Um, don't know much about North Carolina's and you mentioned down South Carolina. Everybody talks about juice wells, Mike, and that's mm -hmm. true, but. It's way beyond that. Nobody's talking about Xavier Leggett, and they're going to be. People are starting to figure out Trey Knox. Oh, well, actually, he's pretty good. This Trey Simon, Knox is a freak. Oh, my God. I mean, when he, walk, he, he walks in the door, and you realize quickly this guy's going to be in the NFL. Josh Simon. Eddie, Carolina has a lot of added talent that just a lot of people haven't seen, and, and they and haven't all played together. And we don't even – nobody ever talks about Nick Harbor coming in. Our, our Carolina, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the five star uh, out of DC. He's going to play receiver. He's 6'5, 220, runs four, three, whatever, and is an Olympic level sprinter. So, Mike, I, you know, who was, who was the, was Elijah Green the leading running back last year at North Carolina? Does that, isn't that who it was? Uh, I would have been better at this a couple weeks ago. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, is he back? Yes. Okay, wait so wait, 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 wait. Let me think. Hold on. Let me get my thinking cap on. So I'm, I'm, I'm in. I just was in LSU uh, running back room mode. Uh, a lot. I believe Elijah Green is back. I believe I think, that I that their to. backs are back. Somebody will look that up and and um and double double check it for me. But yeah, I, they feel pretty good about their backs. I get yeah, that. Okay. I I think the bigger question for them is going to be. Again, who replaces Josh Downs if if anybody? Do they have do they have guys that can take the top off uh, on the outside that you're really concerned about? But I think they feel pretty good about their their running backs. I don't think that's the um, the biggest issue with them. And they want to be more balanced. That's the one thing too that they the coaching staff talked to us about. 
and I'm not spilling the beans here. This is stuff that's been made public. Otherwise, I would not uh, <laughs> kind of betray the confidence of all that. But they they want to be again. That goes back to we don't want to just be a finesse team that that's throwing and but we can't get. Uh, their, their problem was they would get into the red zone very often, or they would even get inside the ten. And if it was an obvious run situation, uh, either they didn't trust it, or when they tried it, they didn't get it. And so that goes to we're too soft. We're too soft. And that, so. They want to get to the point where they're a little more balanced. And that's the other thing with Phil Longo. Phil Longo is an interesting – I covered Phil Longo going back to when he was with, at Ole Miss. Phil Longo's teams throw the ball a ton, aren't don't run a bunch, aren't ultimately uh, very physical, uh, but they score fast. Well, when you score fast, you put more pressure on your defense. And so defensive coordinators will never say this. I don't think they necessarily like working with that type of offense. Right, because it just puts more pressure on their defense. They're on the field a hell of a lot more. Uh, this year with Chip Lindsey, I think you're going to see them run the ball more, particularly when they get in the red zone. By the way, is anybody – I know you have, Mike. J.C., Phil, have you all looked at North Carolina's first four games of the season? Have you, have you seen how – No. I've it's very touchy-feely, man. Me on the first one, and Elijah Green it, what, is still on the roster, junior. Well, yep. Well, it's 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 sneaky good, Mike, because you got Carolina, then they then they've got App State, careful, which is not an easy game as they found out last year. Careful, <laughs> and then they've got Minnesota, who also won not an easy last, game. Yep, not easy, and then they got to go to Pitt, who, by the way, also won nine games last year. That's right. That's, that's right. And and, and and yeah, the coaching staff so, talked about that. Like they, like, like that's a legit start to the year. There's not, there's yeah. not a, there, there's not one of those where you can just kind of we got this one boys yeah. uh, this is our cupcake that's that's not there's no cupcake there it's, there's it's no cupcake skin. there so you can you could easily find yourself dig yourself into a hole <laughs> if you're not careful and then if memory serves uh, their last couple games of the season are brutal right take a look at the end of that schedule um, well yeah. I, <laughs> Yeah, at Clemson, at NC State. There you go. I mean, (laughs) so that's so it it, like the the so called softer part of their schedules in the middle. um, But the the beginning and the end can sink you. Both of them can sink you if you're not careful. It is soft. Syracuse, Miami. What's the ACC? Look at (laughs) Miami, Virginia, Georgia Tech, Campbell. Oh, they got Campbell in there. Campbell, that's Campbell. That'll be a tough one. That's their Campbell Camels, baby. I didn't even know Coast Campbell. My, Mike, Mike called a Campbell game last year. <laughs> well, uh, t- uh, two years ago, yeah. yeah. Two years ago, wait for, I remember that. That's right, because it was a <laughs> Friday night game. So the, Friday night's <laughs> an easy way to get on national TV, so they played on Friday night. At, and that was Mike Minter, former Carolina Panther, who coaches oh. The, oh, okay. uh, the, the, fighting, the fighting Camels. Yeah. We we've talked about Campbell on this show probably more than really? any other non North Carolina <laughs> show because of their baseball team because yeah. uh, they're, they're kind of oh, like yeah, the top sure. fifteen yeah. this year. Yeah. They're fading out of top sixteen though. Mm-hmm. I applied to Campbell University out of high school. Really? How about that? Never visited. <laughs> never went to Bowie's Creek for that visit. But Campbell and Mercer and USC isn't upstate, that a dry campus or dry county? I don't know. Or that's Western uh, Carolina. I don't know. I, I, I would yeah, survive. Um, dry. You had to drive 20 minutes to get. Yeah. No, yeah. Know. Phil went to Western Carolina. Are you I kidding me? Cullowee is a dry county. Yeah. 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 Right dry. Of it. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. My yeah. goodness. You got to go to Silva, right? You got to sneak into yep. the bars to, of Silva. Which fortunately is not that far, but yeah, yeah. you got to go to Silva to buy alcohol. <laughs> By the way, so not to circle, to. completely circle back, but uh, Elijah Green, DJ Jones, and the and the 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 guy that uh, there's two that they're really hyped up about. Petaway is there. He get he didn't play in the spring because of injury, oh, yeah. but he is their speed guy. And then Amarian Hampton, he looks like an SCC back. Like he is, he's a dude. The, those are two guys they got in that big recruiting class, both right. from in state, and they were ranked way up there. They're both yeah. studs. Uh, I'm looking at it. They got British British Brooks. Gamecock fans will remember him. Oh yeah, he's the yeah. one that broke off the long touchdown run, probably the, the highlight the bowl of the game, game for the Tigers. Yeah, the the yeah. But uh, he's listed as a starter in the step chart. I'm looking at then Green. The, the two studs aren't on there though, so I, you know, um, yeah. Caleb Hood is number three right now. But like, I, they got a bunch I would of running be backs. willing to. 
They, well, that's yeah, the thing. Look, a, Go ahead, Jason. Go ahead. Well, I was oh, going to say they got I, a bunch I, of backs, but I, but they're they're trying to figure out who's their bell cow, like who who is yeah. their guy. And again, if you were to project this a couple of years from now, I think it's going to be Hampton. But for now, like yeah. Petaway's their speed guy, and and Hood and and uh, Jones and Green, they're going to have a, a lot of carries, but they're going to they're going to spread it out. I don't think they're going to have one guy that's by far and away their top uh, carry guy. I think the question with North Carolina is what it has been. Can they play defense or not? I mean, if they can't play without, defense, without a question, yeah. with, mm-hmm. without question, and, and and again, can they score fourth and one? You know, can they get that tough yard? And that's where the physicality comes in, and that's been the knock on this team. As JC can tell you, they've recruited well under Mac Brown. Like they they're not getting cheated on bringing in athletes, uh, but defensively, don't know don't know where it stacks up. I mean, we they're not Clemson. They're not Florida State. Those are going to be the two favorite teams in the league this year in the ACC. Uh, it's going to be Clemson and Fl- Florida State now has it going. Like, this is what everybody in that conference feared, that eventually they would figure it out if if they stuck with their coach. And there are a lot of people that wanted them fired, and there was the Dion hype train and everything else. But they just – they stayed with Norvell, trusted the process – uh, I did their their bowl game against Oklahoma, and they're like it's the first it's the most amount of excitement I've seen surrounding that program in a long time because they have been beat up and battered in Tallahassee. Like they just kind of lost their way, but I think they're getting it back now, um, and to the point where I think it's gonna it's gonna go back to a who's gonna win the ACC, Clemson or Florida State? Like that's going to be the question you hear in 2023 and 2024 and 2025. And then it's the North Carolinas of the world. We already know where NC state just can never get over the hump. They are like perpetually going to be in that second tier. Um, and, and wake had a great run and they're extremely, extremely well coached, but they don't, they're never going to have the athletes to truly win the ACC again. I don't think in, in, in the near future. Um, so I think it becomes a, can the Tar Heels get, in that top tier. And I don't know. I I don't know if they have quite what Clemson and Florida State have going. We'll see. I'll say this about UNC. Like a few years back, they signed one of the on paper, one of the top defensive line classes in the country. As we all know, the Carolinas are D-line heaven, and they got most of the North Carolina kids. Uh, and they're all seniors now. I mean, Desmond Evans is a senior. Miles Murphy is a senior. Kendrick Bigley Jones is a senior. They got a sophomore five-star guy, Travis Shaw from Greensboro, that's listed in the two deep uh, mm-hmm. at the nose tackle position. Uh, if those guys play up to their potential, uh, North Carolina's defensive line could be a handful. I know when you watch when you've watched them play the last few years, it's like, oh, <laughs> you know, right. these guys aren't very good. But you never know when the light comes on. I mean, th- there's a reason. Evans and Murphy and Bingley Jones and Shaw and all those guys were highly recruited. So Gamecocks offensive line is going to have to come to play. Isn't this a uh, classic case, JC of, and you and I talk about this on, on the podcast a lot, JC and Morgan just had Tim couch on uh, very uh, good, good time uh, interviewing one of the best quarterbacks come down the SEC in a while. Yeah. Um, nice plug. Th- is it misevaluation or culturally, is there something amiss where guys that highly rated that are on that too deep? I mean, if you watched Tar Heel football last year, they didn't exactly shine, right? Four stars, five stars. Like they didn't, they weren't game wreckers on that D line. So what, what is it? What's wrong? Well, I, we have how many years of, of cultural proof at Texas and North Carolina? Mm hmm of guys following similar paths when they were highly recruited. And, and right. I, I'll, and look, I, I love Mac Brown. I think he's a, everybody uh, loves Mac. He's, he's one of these guys that's first been class great for college fo- yeah. football and all that. But, but somewhere along the way, his team stopped being physical and, and I can't really place my finger on it. Cause when he's at North Carolina, the first time, that's really oh. what they were, was a were nasty, beast. nasty defense. Yeah. I mean, it was, well, they had NFL person. guys all over. Yeah, um, yeah. That 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 those yeah. late nineties Mac Brown team before he departed for Austin, go back and look at those names, and you're talking first, second, third round draft picks all over the place. Yeah. And so I, I don't I don't know now. what happened, but 
you know, if you're the Gamecocks, you take it <laughs> and you're like, all right, that's fine. And you're, you're kind of hoping maybe this isn't the game slash year. Uh, all these guys sort of put it all together and, and, and play. Cause I, I know like when they were recruiting all these guys, I was like, well, North Carolina is going to be back on that side of the ball in short order. And Here's it just what, has not happened. Right. I, I, cause I know this audience is a hundred percent. Well, tell me how it affects the Gamecocks. Okay. Yeah. As I look at this game, I don't think the Tar Heels are a more talented team. So it, what you have to hope is Drake May just doesn't go off. Drake May goes off and you know you win the and they win and they win the turnover battle and they uh you know some guys shine and have one of their best games and again they're trying to make a statement turning over a new leaf we're not soft anymore look at us we get to play an SEC team and we're going to do everything we can to be if you can avoid all that uh Carolina to me the Gamecocks would be the more talented team top to bottom right 1 through 85 top to bottom. But anytime you're going up against a, a first round draft pick type talent, a quarterback on the other side, that's always a little bit scary because if he goes off, then all of a sudden you can tilt that scale the other way. We're going to find out this month, what time that game will. Isn't it great kick, that it's where we're, we're talking about a game. It's May 2nd, but because both these teams decided to play a challenging game in week one, uh, yeah. it, it just, the whole off season has a little bit of extra juice. If, if week one was Eastern Washington, <clears throat> what are we talking about right now? Or you, know, and Mike, you, Eastern Washington is pretty week good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <we do. laughs> All right. Campbell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but you, Camels. And, and you can make the argument. I know Florida State and LSU obviously play that weekend. The, these two games have the best quarterback matchups by far and away in yeah. college football that weekend. Mm -hmm. But you can make the argument now, as it stands now, that this could be could be the best game of the weekend. Um, it's just an argument. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that it will be or won't be, but it could be the best game of the well, weekend. It's going to have a so, ton of eyeballs. So. I'll tell you that much. And that's that's the benefit oh, okay. of playing these games. Now you put yeah. your you put your you know what's on the chopping block when you play these kind of games. We yep. all remember how yep. debilitating that week one loss to the Tar Heel was Tar Heels was back in what year was that? JC, you and I were watching that one together. <laughs> 2019, uh, brother. 2019, uh, yeah. Uh, Nat flew in. We had first started date. Nat flew in for to Atlanta to watch it and yeah. Uh, I left after the game and we went to, uh, oh, what's it called? The, uh, ah, it's the, it's the strip club where the retired strippers hang out. The, the, oh, the Piedmont <laughs> Inn, something like that. Uh, I've lived in Atlanta for 12 know. years and I don't even know this place. <laughs> no, I'm, not saying answer, I'm, right it. I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know which one you're talking about. It would have, Bill, it would have strippers. really been telling if Mike's oh, like, oh, oh no, that's oh, not oh, it. Oh. This is the name. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, 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 no. I do. Okay. Six miles away. Uh, Claremont talking. Lounge, the Claremont, Claremont Lounge. Lounge. Claremont. Yes, we, we, I was no. okay. so distraught during <laughs> the daylight. The that it, this is in daylight. I went to the Claremont Lounge with Nat and took her there because I was like, "Well, Ken's all over it." Ken just, yeah. Ken's like, "You got to try." You couldn't get to that fingers, keyboard man. quickly enough. So <laughs> the Claremont Lounge for those that are that are listening, it's not what you think it is. It's not what you hope it is. Uh, <laughs> It, it is something that most people in Atlanta, if, if they're visiting or what have you, do at least once in their lifetime and, and, and maybe only once. It is exactly what J.C. Uh, described. It is not like, uh, let's say the, these these particular performers are not in their prime, uh, but but that's part of the joke. It's it's there more for a laugh than it is a um really sultry yeah. performance yeah and you tip them but they make money i mean th there's got to be a yeah. place yeah, for retired strippers yeah. to go yeah and, and it's and and it's and these are the ones that have already made it through college and, and put their that's right <laughs> yeah. yeah they yes and there's <laughs> you know the, the tattoos have already been uh printed on and uh many of the well. dance moves that they were performing 20 years ago it's a little bit out of their reach now, so you got to stay in your lane. <laughs> and just they can't get as high on the 
on that what? pole anymore. No, not they at all. They stay at the bottom of it. Yeah, <laughs> no, not it's doing not that old, like backward There's stretch. No, and, uh, those, those those moves are – that's in the rear view now. <laughs> now it's like – it's kind of like a basketball player that no longer has a vertical leap, and he's just – now he's coming up with, you know, your dad's like doing the, the hook shots in the backyard because he's got nothing else. That's what these way these ladies are going to the backup moves. It's old man basketball with a pole. All right. Yeah. Cash okay. only. It's my $2 brand. Can, $2 can PBR. Yeah. Cash I, forgot, I forgot you wound up there, JC. God only knows how <laughs> – what your level of impairment after that football game was by the time you got there, I'm surprised you weren't on stage performing some of the moves with those ladies. I just could not believe what I just seen on TV. <laughs> and so I was like, I want to go see, I want to go escape for a little while. That'll and, do it. Yeah. And, and it is, it's, it, it, I, I, I kind of see it as, as supporting a good cause. Like yeah, I said, cause yeah. I mean, these ladies, they, they, you know, what, what are they going to do? And I think everybody's got to see it once. I had actually been there after a football game in 2018, Mike. You didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. But uh, <laughs> learning you know, more about I, this experience every day by myself. <laughs> but uh, so this I wanted to all- show it to Nat and all that. And we and we went back. We went actually. Uh, me and Mike uh, actually later that night watched the Missouri lose to Wyoming that day and stuff. But it was huh. so I gotten over it. But uh, yeah. that was a tough game. But yeah, the game guys. They don't need to lose that game. They, they they've won seven of nine against North Carolina since. I guess the last this is 1983. That's like 40 years. Um, you know, they've dominated teams from that state. Like you said, the Gamecocks have more talent. I mean, they should they should win, but it's it's not it's not a layup. It, it just yeah. The only thing you'd throw, the only caveat I would throw out there is that this is not the level of Tar Heel team that you saw in the Mayo Bowl. Like the, they they have they've upped their athlete quotient, and again, they have a ridiculously talented quarterback. That's that's the difference. We'll find out the kick time for that this month. Uh, probably coming out of um, out of uh, spring meetings for the SEC is when they generally yeah. announce the first three weeks. So it's we'll one of the Herman, it, Georgia. It's kind of a crappy week one, to be honest. I mean, I don't see very many other, you know, and I guess uh, Colorado TCU because of the Dion factor. But I also, I mean, that wouldn't Mike. You're, you're a TV guy. Wouldn't Colorado TCU be uh, a, a Fox uh, or a potentially a Fox game? Where's the game we'll at again? It's, it, a, it's in it's Fort in Worth. Fort Worth. Yeah, it's a Fox game. Yeah. Now, technically, that could be either because ESPN and Fox yeah. split the Big 12, right? Yeah. So, yeah. technically, that could be either one. Uh, so, I Let's don't see. I don't know the answer to that 100%. Let's, here's the rest of the schedule in the Big 12 that week. Uh, are we getting are we getting booted off by the music? What, what? Hold on, hey, Phil, let's hold that for like five. Hold it. For well, five. we can keep Mike <laughs> if he if he'll stick around for ten minutes. You guys don't have good. a hard clock. This is a podcast. <laughs> Wait, I gotta keep this thing on the rails, Mike. Hey, are we? Are we? Are we, yeah. we got <laughs> handing off the field. What's going on here? <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll, we'll, Do you want to? Here, bring back Mike. Mike. Two Mike, minute break. You got, we'll you, got, you got ten minutes, Mike. Yeah, go ahead. What the hell? Okay, we'll we'll hit a timeout and we'll bring you right back. All right, hang tight. <laughs> What's up, Gamecock fans? This is Pitcher Noah Hall. If you want some delicious food for your event, I suggest visiting nanasports.com today to find out what they all have to offer. It's really good Southern cuisine based out of Charlotte, my hometown. I hope you guys go check it out. Go Cox and go Nanas. Are you looking to buy a new home? Kevin O'Connell with Union Home Mortgage is a local mortgage expert and Gamecocks fan servicing North and South Carolina. Whether you're buying a home, building your dream home with new construction, or turning your equity into cash, UHM's world-class service will ensure you find the perfect mortgage to achieve your home ownership goals. Call Kevin at 803-906-0244 or visit UHM.com today. Union Home Mortgage is an equal housing lender. NMLS 2229 LONMLS 1772182 
Electric Bikes of Charleston offers the most fun you'll ever have on two wheels. The home of Oventon, Velotric, Magnum Bikes, and more, they sell to consumers all across the state and offer outstanding warranties and service after the sale. Their electric bikes are equipped with five levels of pedal assist plus a throttle so you can ride longer, handle the heat better, but still get great exercise. Bikes are available for all ages and sizes. Visit electricbikescharleston.com or stop into their store in Mount Pleasant if you're in the low country. Electric Bikes of Charleston, powering inside the Gamecocks, the show. Hey everyone, this is Jack Mahoney from Gamecock Baseball and inside the Gamecocks the show is teed up every day by TravelingCountryClub.com so if you all love golf make sure you guys go check out their awesome membership options and go Cox. Welcome to TravelingCountryClub.com, your modern golf club experience. Hey folks, this is Michael Manis, former Gamecock golfer, inviting you to play more golf with a membership to TravelingCountryClub.com. With over 40 courses across the Carolinas, our membership provides you with an affordable way to enjoy a club-like golf experience. From the mountains to the coast, we offer golf courses that will challenge all types of golfers, no matter your handicap level or level of play. Plus, we offer unique membership benefits not seen anywhere else as part of Traveling Country Club. In July, we're excited to bring to you the third annual Plunder on Polly's two-day golf tournament with rounds played at Caledonia and True Blue Golf Courses in the heart of Polly's Island. Head to TravelingCountryClub.com to register for that event. And it is not exclusive to TCC members, but to become one, you can sign up and bring to life your golf game. Tee it up with Traveling Country Club, TravelingCountryClub.com, TravelingCountryClub.com, proud partners of Inside the Gamecocks, the show. This is Zachary Davis from Carolina Hoops, and you're watching the show with JB, JC, and Phil. Go Cox. Welcome back, everybody. To We're Inside all fighting the backstage. I, <laughs> or did I cause a real, you know no, what? No, that was great. <laughs> no, no, you damn did right. It. I'm going to click on the ads. You damn right. <laughs> we got bills to pay That's around here. When you, yeah, yeah. And you got to pay for extra studio is, time now. Is this, well, it's in the third well, hour. It's so funny. The sun rooms of Columbia, too. Let's not forget. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, man. You, you, son, <laughs> you son of a bitch. No, I'm just kidding. That's right. no, I, my, Mike, it's so funny because, and you well, you and I have talked about this before, like when, when I first got into JB and Goldwater, uh, you, your radio brain never turns off. No, no. You can't turn it off. And like you've no. got radio brain and TV brain, so you see it from... Yeah. But when you get into something like this and you're running your own deal and you're doing it digitally and you and but you try to structure it the way that you know it, uh, it, it almost you know, you, you know how it is. You're always looking at the clock. You're going, no, you need minutes. that. You need yeah, that. You know, minute. when I when I did radio in uh, Atlanta, my my uh, first or second program director at a station now defunct 790 The Zone, uh, he they had a, a computer that would give you a printout of every every break that you took and when you took it. And if we, as the host, and I usually ran point, if we didn't hit that first break by 13 minutes after the hour, you'd get called into the principal's office. So let's say you got in like a little hot topic and instead of breaking at 1.13 PM, you break at 1.17. I mean, he'd raise holy hell at you because in, in his mind, they did stats and numbers and thankfully we're drifting away from this. Um, nowadays, pretty soon people are just going to find the shows they want. If they want to hear, uh, from Jamie Bradford and JC Sherbert, they're going, they're not going to be hamstrung by having to listen to a bad radio station because they can listen to you guys whenever they want. But, but this is in the height of strict formats and the, and the research said that if you didn't break by 13 and your, your competitor did, there's two, uh, sports stations in Atlanta. Back then there were three. So then now you're giving your competitor an edge because they're back from their first break quicker than you're back from your first break and so on. So, yes, I know what your your brain is is doing and saying. Yeah. And here I am I, just I, completely I, trashing the format of the Inside the Gamecock <laughs> show, causing complete upheaval, turbulence all over the place. And uh, 
I I think I should be put on probation. I will not appear on this show for another six months before I can learn. <laughs> I, see, wait, I see what he's, yeah, I see yeah, what he's right, doing here. I see what he's doing. He's like, we can't parlay you, that. You don't need to anymore. call me for no, six can... months at least. Six months. I'm the Claremont, Mike. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that would fit right into the target audience of the Claremont Mike's... Lounge. We we've all known for a long time. Mike's smooth, you know. He's slick. He knows what he's doing. He's very calculated. And guys, I don't think you should call me for at least six months. For six months. This up. Yeah, that's that's, the, right. that's the probation period. That's <laughs> so, I mean, he, Phil's he got his daily shift to work at. I mean, <laughs> you know, right, yeah. those fajitas don't make themselves. No. <laughs> Somebody's got to go out there and and get them ready. Our pets. Heads are dude. Mike. Yeah. Mike. Uh, Mike and I probably went out to lunch fifteen times when I lived in Atlanta. <laughs> I think we went to Chili's 13 of those times. <laughs> <laughs> We're big fans. Hey, I like the I nachos. Know, I, I, and Chili's was my first job in high school. So yeah. I, oh, really? I, oh, I, know, I know what goes on behind the, uh -oh. behind the scenes. <laughs> Jeez. I know. Phil, uh, should I eat at Chili's or not? Well, that was one of the reasons I didn't decide to work in the kitchen <laughs> when I went back into the restaurant business. So, so like, all right, here, here's I'm a pop good. quiz for you, Phil. Since you you do you you weren't kidding, you do work at Chili's. No, all no, right. I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Pop, what what is a boat? A boat, that's the little side thing that comes with your fajitas, with your sour cream, pico, cheese. And Whoa. If you want there it, you go. Also, Bravo. Yeah, that's Bravo. a boat. <laughs> you only know that if you've ever worked at a Chili's. That's what they call a boat. I don't know why they call it a boat, but they call it a boat. And back well, in the that day, I used to make boats. Yeah. Used you to worked there boats. in high school, so this hasn't changed for a while. No, this I mean, I was 15, so, you know, I did, but but every now and then, I like I ate at the Chili's last week, and I said on my boat, because I'm not a sour cream guy, I said, mm -hmm. could you do no sour cream and extra guacamole? And at some sometimes you'll get a, a, a waiter or a waitress that'll look at you like you just asked to, to launch a rocket in outer space when you ask that. <laughs> but the rest of them will be like, yeah, no problem. I'll tell yeah. them to remake a boat. <laughs> Uh, uh, you so want me to get weekend. rid of the sour cream and add two scoops of guac? Man, oh man, you're asking a lot there, brother. <laughs> yeah. Mike's like Mike gets up with his dollar bills. He's like, I know guac is extra. I know. Yeah, I know. Like, you know I mean. Here's the extra. I know the price of guac versus the price of sour cream. I get it. You add two dollars. Whatever we need to do here to make this transaction go. <laughs> Man, you are asking a lot for me to get getting back to the Gamecocks and potentially oh. the TV slide. <laughs> good uh, good transition, JC. Well, well, hey, well, well, this is the first serious. time that JC has ever had to redirect anything. Yeah, I was gonna say like, like, doing Beavis and Butthead before I came on. Mike, he's got him out of his card. element here. <laughs> you, you, usually <laughs> Phil and I are looking at each other like, do you want to jump in or should I do it? So, yeah. <laughs> no JC's like, let's get this train back on the tracks. Mike's breaking down the chili yeah. menu. How long did we yeah. let the uh, bad Harry Carey and Cocho <laughs> impression go on? <laughs> That's funny. Um I don't know. Uh, okay, so they moved Florida, Utah to Thursday. All right. You got Louisville, Georgia Tech at Mercedes Benz on Friday. That's a dub. By the way, that is a JC, guys, that is a sign of things to come. And I hate to say this, but when the SEC goes to nine games, you could pretty much kiss the classic uh, kickoff game matchups goodbye. Mm -hmm. They're struggling yeah. already. The fact that they're getting okay Louisville, Georgia Tech, like they're. <laughs> There, this is the precursor of that. We're about to get rid of these matchups. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I, I just hope it doesn't happen before Virginia Tech and South Carolina play in it. Yeah, I do want to see Gamecocks that. play in 2025 to, against right. Tech, but uh, yeah. that's I, I can see that most of the fans like don't even like, Alabama fans complain about them all the time. Gamecock fans don't like going to Charlotte. This is the last Charlotte game that's scheduled, so so I get it. But you know, so so then Florida State LSU uh, in Orlando. Uh, is on Sunday, uh, and that's the marquee matchup of the weekend. I think we'd all agree that that is, you know, Florida State LSU is going to be a heck of a game mm -hmm. uh, down in Orlando. So here, 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 here's the competition: West Virginia at Penn State, yeah, Colorado ABC. at TCU, Boise State at Washington, Virginia Tennessee in Nashville, Coastal at UCLA, and East Carolina at Michigan. Those are 
the rest of it is garbage. And well, that's Pitt, weird because we, we've had some opening weekends that were awesome. And this is just not, for college football in general, an, uh, an overall good. Ohio State at Indiana, maybe, since it's a league game and it's Ohio State. But, I, you know, I I didn't even include that one. So, I, I think the game guys stand and the Tar Heels stand a pretty good chance of, you know, being that primetime game on ESPN or at least a night game and not like a noon kickoff. It won't be a noon kickoff. Not with those two quarterbacks going. Yeah, I would agree with that. And not with that competition. No. Penn State, West Virginia, Mike, is so – that's the Big Ten, so that could be the big noon kickoff, I guess, technically. Yeah, it's Big Ten, Big 12, so. Yeah, probably will be then, right? I mean, yeah. they're going to put Dion's team on some great spot. Slot. Yeah, and, and they're going to get their – and they're going to get their ass beat too, because they're not going to be any good. Uh, that that could be a theme of the entire season: Colorado getting its ass beat yeah. by X, Y, and Z. There's yeah. what are they down to like thirty something scholarship players? Yeah, Mike, they're gonna they're gonna be terrible. I mean, it's not long term. I, I I'm sure they'll be fine, but they're gonna be. Terrible. I don't know. I, I don't even know about long. I mean, we again. Uh, JC and I have talked about this on the podcast, which I'm sure he has diligently promoted umpteen times every day here on the Inside the Gamecock Show. Yeah. No, I mean, we, we've we talked about the fact that with all the – the hype is justified. It's a, it's an, it's a fascinating story. Um, here is a guy that didn't coach a lick, that coached two years at HBCU, clearly had the most talent of any HBCU team, did not win the championship his two years as the coach at Jackson State, in spite of them having the most talented team, um, says things that are very polarizing. He's already said a number of things that either you love it or you're like, whoa, 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 Dion, man, watch yourself. Um, and he's he doesn't need the job because, again, I'm not his accountant, but he has <laughs> – I'm guessing blank you money so he can go out there and just kind of do and say what he, what he wants. And it's, uh, as I've made the, it's like a reality show. Like it's, I'm watching a unique uh, season on Netflix of uh last chance you, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's just, it's, it's another version of that. So I'm fascinated by the story, but I, I, I put out the under over on how long does Dion last in Boulder? And I said three and a half would be my Vegas over under. I'm taking the under. I hope I'm wrong because I think it, I think it is good for college football, the storyline. I'm not convinced he's going to do a great things in Boulder. I'm not even sure what conference Colorado is going to be in next year. So I, there's no telling. But the, the media, much of it, will be pulling for Dion. They, they will put on their pom-poms and cheerleader uniforms, and they will be rooting for Dion all the way for a myriad of reasons. That doesn't mean that it's going to be an overwhelming success. I totally agree with that. And, you think uh, six and six is enough, Mike, to get him out of there? Like, what? Put, it, put together a resume, six and six, with a depleted roster. To get him out of there on. is in what? Get a bigger job? Get a bigger job. Because that's what I think. It's like just a platform for you him think to this move is just on a, a step more high profile here? gig. I, I uh, mean, maybe, I, you know, the you if, if Florida State does this year what I think they're going to do, like there's not going to be a move to make a change in Tallahassee. I no, think that's the one that he was kind of zeroing in on uh, for a while there. But, you know, like Auburn could have hired Dion. There's a number of programs that could have hired Dion this this go round and said, nah, no thanks. If he goes six and six, does I mean it's a great question. Does that mean is Dion a hot commodity at that point? I I don't know. There's a lot of coaches that could go to Boulder and do six and six, right? Yeah. Well, the Auburn thing's an outlier though, because you know way better than I do. And JC, you know way better than I do. Auburn wants generally somebody they can either control or at least have some type of control of. They would have zero control over Deion Sanders. That that's true. I will say Auburn has gotten better in terms of that. Like I'm not sure you're going to control Hugh Freeze either. Um, but but you're <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, Auburn is a unique job. There's no doubt about it. And Dion does not fit into what Auburn wants to have done. 
um, and, and all the, the you, you still have to answer to the same people. I'm not sure if the same people have the same pull that they think they did. If they did, Kevin Steele would have been your head coach, uh, which which would have been laughable. But uh, but yeah, I think I think the Bobby Louders of the world, if you want to go all the way back there that to that time frame, I think a lot of that has cooled off a bit. I just can't believe that Deion Sanders, the coach, the guy's never been a coordinator. I mean, how can you be a head coach if you're not a coordinator somewhere first, Mike? It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, these idiots like yeah. South Carolina <laughs> hiring these coaches. Well, but look, Shane, <laughs> if, if if we're stacking up res, I mean, Shane Beamer did a lot of stuff, and yeah. and it's you, it, you it, think? It, I mean, Dion came <laughs> from the NFL Network podium. Right. Yeah, yeah. To, okay, I'm, I'm the head coach of an HBCU. Like that was his background. See, Under Armour All American game every year with Herm Edwards. Yeah, there you go. Oh, well, there you go. Got back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what a resume. He uh, has yeah, been I a head remember. coach. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it, it was that. weird because like when, when he was around, it wasn't. He, you're, you're like sitting there and you're like talking to him and he talks to anybody and you're like you're, you're like you got to kind of go. I'm like, I was just talking to Deion Sanders. Mm, yeah, like when I was like, like I was a Falcons fan and a Braves fan. I remember that day he played for both. Mm -hmm. He was like a hero. Yeah, it got yeah. lost on me back in the day when yeah, hey coach, what do you think about these TVs? Well, this is this 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 this, and and then you like walk away. You're like, that was Deion Sanders. I should have taken a picture with him or something, you know. Yeah. So anyway, well, Mike, before we before we let you run, do want to uh, do want and while everybody's on Twitter arguing over what night the college football playoff games should be played. <laughs> oh, God, especially some of these national guys. Oh, my God, it's not ideal. They're on Thursday night. Dude, you complain about everything. Shut up. Go back to your hole. Um, and y'all know who I'm talking about. It's the same group every time. Uh, in baseball, though, clearly the Gamecocks uh, are just having a hell of a year, even with the, the uh, series loss this weekend to Auburn. With all the injuries they're once again dealing with, although they will get these guys back on the offensive side at least, um, they are one of, Mike, right now, five SEC teams, two, three, four, five, six, that are ranked in the top eight in RPI. Or how about this? Five of the top six from the SEC are uh, – five of the top six in the RPI are from the SEC. Um in your mind, playing at home from here for South Carolina specifically, they got to go to Kentucky. You call plenty of series there. For whatever reason, Carolina has struggled up there a lot over the years. We'll see what happens. They got to go to Arkansas. We know what that's all about. And then Tennessee is kind of becoming the Tennessee we thought they would be, and that's who they rounded out with. But here they are at 35 and 8. What do they have to drive home with to secure? Not a top 16. They seem comfortably to be there now, a top 8 national seed. Yeah, I I don't think there's ever been more than four from one conference. Am I right on that? I thought yeah. last year there was five, but am I five wrong? That, that, I think it was Omaha. Omaha. They got five. How, 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 oh, that's what yeah, it was. Omaha, that's right. It was, like, it was Omaha. It yeah, was yeah. Five, you're right, Mike. And then, Mike, you're right. And then yeah. and then Oklahoma and Texas. Yeah. I think so, I think the SEC yeah. had three of the top eight last year, but five yeah. ended up. Uh, my right. point is, is that RPI-wise, yeah, the SEC should have more than four. But I don't think that's ever happened before. And I do think, and the committee will never admit this, I do think there's plenty of people that don't want that, that want more balance geographically and conference-wise. So if they can find a reason to keep that number five, number six team out of a top eight national seed from, from one conference, then I think they will. So it's a roundabout way of saying, do yourself a favor, Finish in the top four SEC programs with all the metrics and the standings and everything else, and you'll feel much better about getting a national seed than if you're not. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I honestly think they need to win one of their final three series and don't get swept in the others. I think well, that's the other. Yeah, that, that's where the human component comes in because yeah. the the humans, and again, that's, that's who ultimately makes this decision. They're going to look at it. If you don't do that and say, well, yeah, Gamecocks peaked early. And there's always one of these teams that do this, but they lose two or three at home to Auburn, and then they struggled against Kentucky, and then they 
struggled. Uh, there's a lot of people that are going to struggle at Baum Stadium in Fayetteville, but you don't want to be, you don't want to give the committee a reason when they're splitting hairs on that final seed, that, that number eight, if you will. You don't want to give them a reason to, to, to knock you out. No, no, not at all. Though I will say hats off to, um, to the D1 guy. Rodgers and those guys because yesterday they were asked what well, Carolina got beat by Auburn at home why didn't they move they said because we pay attention to teams and we know that they are banged up incredibly mm -hmm. and uh, we think they're the third best team in the country just like LSU's lost they haven't moved Wake Forest yeah. has lost they haven't moved like that's what the way they said so you're gonna you're gonna have one of those, those it it does it yeah. does make the, the the 2000 teams run so amazing you know how many amazing you know how many conference games that team lost at home at the Sarge uh, 15 they, of them. I think they maybe one. That's it, right? One to Florida. Yeah. yeah. After yeah. they already clinched the series, they lost on a Sunday to the Gators. They were 14 and one at home against SEC competition. So everybody other than Florida, they swept. And Florida, they took two out of three. That's doesn't get any stronger than that. Who, who was uh, the voice of the Gamecocks in? Do you remember? I can't remember, but he was a, a, a good young gentleman. Who would Tom always Price. help old ladies across the street, and that's and old Mary under it, yes, <laughs> and, and old men. <laughs> Sometimes he would help old men across a highway in the middle of the night in a bus stop and prevent them from being killed. Dude. But that's a whole other story. Hey, I talked to Reese Havens about that one time. He was like, "Dude, he almost got hit by a bus yeah. when, in the highway in yeah, Mississippi." Tom had nine there. lives because <laughs> you don't typically take a seventy-eight-year-old man and put him on an eight-hour bus trip in the middle of the night. And then let him walk out to pick up a snack across a uh, four lane highway in Mississippi. But uh, he survived many of those. <laughs> I sounded like uh, I sound, I sounded like Luke Wilson in uh, in uh, old was it old school? Old school, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you're in love with somebody? And you get over a road trip, and uh, two naked what people come out of a closet like a gosh darn magic trick. But anyway, love is blind. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing, I Mike. Uh, family here's out there listening. Here's something for you and your bride. Uh, next time you go to Kentucky, I got to figure out exactly who's making it, but this was because I am one of the originals in the church choir. This is the new whiskey by Eric Church called Whiskey Gypsy that is coming out. Where I'm is on the still relocated? It's somewhere up there. It's a, it's a, it's, you'll have to somewhere go to the website up there. I'll text you the website because it's, it's a little different how they're doing it. It's a collaboration of a bunch of different, uh, uh whiskeys to do this but um uh there will be you know it'll be released uh to quote unquote church it's 200 dollars a bottle i okay. mean it's not going to be cheap uh whiskey but uh, i'm going to send it to you uh, do you know i'm taking the bride to see george Strait and um the king the, the king and who's he with sung the national Sta anthem Staple chris stapleton, stapleton. yeah chris stapleton. we're gonna see him yeah. in denver I, yeah you you probably uh, yeah, uh his birthday his, gift you know, when I was your neighbor, had you listened closely, you would have probably gotten a lot of George Strait education. I <laughs> probably yeah. well, the thing is, I know I way. know old school country. I don't yeah. know new school country. So a lot of the George Strait songs, I will be all over. Stapleton, You'll not like so it. much, but I. Everybody says the same thing. It's it's uh it's great stuff. Um, Jamie, I'll leave you with this. We're taking resumes. So oh, we had oh, yeah. on the podcast, Michael Haney would chime in and do, give us the hot Haney five, oh. which was five topics that uh, JC and I would chop up in college football. Michael has become such a music star that we can't, we just can't get him to carve out the time anymore. He's always off on some uh, concert tour somewhere, some somehow, I think he's in Hawaii right now. So maybe the hot Haney five could be the hot Jamie five. Oh boy. And we could get you involved. I'm I'm just throwing it out there. You have your agent. Talk to our agent. We'll we'll see if we can get something done. Yeah, let me um let me let me talk with her. She'll be home around five. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. B. 
<laughs> yeah, let's see what she Agent says. Agent Mrs. B. I don't know. She just spent 48 hours with JC, so she she she's I'll have to feel feel her out a little bit here. Yeah. Yeah, uh, probably not. Yeah. Y'all probably have to punt me off the podcast for that. Hey, you know. Mike, Mike, I will tell you one of the funnier things that is uh, we we took JC and Nat to Folly this weekend just to kind of see oh, the nice. beach. She's never been out there and and um so we were walking my wife and children left. I was taking them home with me middle of the afternoon coming home to watch the Gamecocks play and uh, JC said I gotta go to the bath so he stopped to use the restroom Nat and I walked out of blue which is the, the hotel right on Folly Beach like our uh-huh. beach. so we walk out I'm pretty sure he knew where my truck was parked we're in the truck and we're just kind of sitting and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're wa- man where's JC so I tried to call him and he doesn't answer and like you know, he doesn't he doesn't move very fast. You know, he just kind of walks at that pace, and that's the way. <laughs> and and we're just sitting there, and I just look up, and on the other side of the street, walking in the total wrong direction, not a care in the world, doesn't feel his phone ringing. He's just putting right along. Yeah, d- down East Ashley Avenue towards oh, yeah. God knows what. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, so should we like chase after him? Or what do we do here? She's like, yeah, just drive around. So I drive around, <laughs> and he's like, oh shit, there, there you are. <laughs> that's about right that hey man yeah <laughs> hi i'm earth have we met yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm just enjoying the, the breeze and the weather man I oh mean, yeah you know, i was just Let's so captivated i mean i i live there i've lived in you know at least that part of the country my whole life and i've been up here four years and so now i feel like i'm like in paradise uh, uh, it does something to your mind right yeah, yeah. so so wait a minute you Jamie, you had a hotel set up on the beach for JC. No, no, no. no, no, no we, just we went uh, out there and we just went out there for the, the day. restaurant. Oh, we, were, and we, were at the, we were at the little restaurant. Yeah, it was a day trip. And I stayed day. at the we stayed at the Holiday Inn Riverview, which is that cylinder looking hotel in okay. Charleston. Uh, still nice. Yeah, I mean, Nat, Nat yeah. loved Charleston. I believe that she loved it so much that there's really not going to be a choice. If we move back to South Carolina as to which city to live oh, in. Yeah. Now. You introduce a woman to Charleston, good luck getting her out of it because that's yeah. uh, women love yeah. them some Charleston. Woo, love buddy. them some Charleston. So I know a good realtor, so we'll hook JC up. There, there we go. Interested. That's right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Hey, you, you, it's a great time to get a real low buy on uh, Charleston real estate. <laughs> oh my yeah. I know she she did. Yeah. She mentioned that poor Nat. She was like, Well, just a little two bedroom shack on the beach. Yeah. I'm like you got about four million dollars lying. Right. Yeah, like, or... Good luck with that. <laughs> you know, good like, luck with we'll that. See, what's three percent of four million? Yeah, we'll uh, find that for you. Yeah, we'll be yeah, there. Right. The, the JC and Morgan podcast alone will be bringing that in in two years. Hey, oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Phil, I guess you're relegated to nighttime chilies work for a while. These hey, two listen, are going to be y'all are buying damn coastal properties. I'm going to get real mad if I'm working at chilies in two years. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Now, are you are you part of the wait staff at Chili's? I'm are a bartender. Part- yeah, oh, nice. yeah, I'm the weekend bartender. Yeah, it's it's, oh. it's fun. I enjoy it. I get oh, to control yeah. the TV. What's and, the you know. number one drink? Now, see at a at a uh, you know your steakhouse would be like an old fashioned. At the Chili's, oh, yeah. where are you located, Phil? Uh, the Haywood Road. Yeah, Greenville. Yeah, in, in Greenville. Okay, yeah, so Greenville, yeah. Chili's in Greenville. It might not be an old fashioned. It, it no. might. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're talking a little bit, <laughs> a little bit different deal. Which it's either the the uh, the, the Is most, a PBR and an old fashioned. That's right. Yeah, oh, that's hell right, with that. Right. That's right. Well, I can't drink that Bud Light anymore. But yeah, that, I get that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I bet. Nice. Oh yeah. Y'all no, probably aren't selling it's, any it's Bud the, Light. It's always you know sweet drinks. I want something sweet. I want something sweet. Which I like. All right, yeah. So one of the margaritas, tropical sunrise. More than gotta like, go, margarita. Yeah. Chili popular. says good margaritas. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They're delicious. Mm. Man, you two, y'all need to start a uh, a show. You know, I tell you, bringing me back. You know, I yeah. I, I, Either that I, or open a franchise. We could. <laughs> yeah. What is that about? A million buy-in. Oh, I could also get a Chick Fil A <laughs> while you're at it. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. It's more than that for Chick Fil A these days. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. All right. Well, right. I'm sorry Thank- that this show has gone so long. God, uh, <laughs> just just do a half hour less tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we'll that's make it up. A- <laughs> yeah, we'll make it, it up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, Craig, Craig, we're talking about drinks. 
Rich, I'm just kidding. Man. I get it. I know. Yeah. I know what that is. All right, Mike. Great stuff, man. Thank you. Uh, Enjoy it, I gentlemen. Thought we were going to talk more baseball, but uh, maybe, maybe, maybe next time in six months. We'll call you in six months. There we go. That's right. <laughs> Haven't even talked about the Braves or what? Well, we'll get to all that another time. Six well, nobody months. can watch the Braves, so it doesn't matter. Nobody can <laughs> watch the Braves. Yeah, I mean, unless you have like Comcast, you can't watch the Braves anymore. Or Direct Comcast TV. or Direct TV, that's it. Yeah, that's to say. I show them anytime them. they're playing at work, I play it on there. <laughs> say, I've said this. I've said this forever. I'll say it until it changes, which it seems like it won't. Major League Baseball, they want to solve their problem. Figure out your TV deals. It's that simple. Yeah. I mean, it's truly really pretty simple. Yeah, that's a yeah. that's a whole other can of worms. It's a whole, whole other can, can of worms, worms no yeah. doubt. All right, Mike, fellas. you're the best, man. Thank you, brother. See Enjoyed you. it. Thank you. Thanks, there Mike. You go. The golden tones of Mike Morgan. All right, uh, 12.33. We are powered by Electric Bikes of Charleston. If you were at our event on Saturday, uh, the Carolina Rise event at Home Team Barbecue, you <laughs> saw them. They were awesome. She sold, um, I know of three that she sold directly, but from what I understand, it was more than that. Just by being there. That's how cool these are. Literally, a guy walked up to me and said, I told her I'm in for two. I'm coming by this week. That yeah. is how cool they are. That <laughs> was awesome. Yeah, Phil, it was one of those moments where you felt like, <laughs> oh, what? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he dude, said he, he just... was in for what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was awesome. And, dude, you should have seen. There, there's a photo of Trey Knox. You'll see it here shortly. Uh, riding. Uh, they, all the football players rode these things. Um, Marcelo style got it up to 25 miles per hour. And he said he felt like he was really, really roaring. So <laughs> if you've never seen these suckers, man, they are so cool. Electric bikes, Charleston.com. There's a reason the whole state comes here just to buy them. Those that are interested, you, you're not just cruising the whole time. You can actually, you know, use it as a bicycle. Thanks to Michelle and her entire team and her family, electric bikes, Charleston.com. They're wonderful partners, better people. And we are certainly glad to be partnered with them. Uh, we will hit a timeout, and we'll be right back. If you're in the upstate of South Carolina and are in need of residential real estate services, Cindy Bass, Sear Foss of Caldwell Banker Kane is for you. Ask her about the village at Creekside, all of her listings in my hometown of Spartanburg, South Carolina, right there on Daniel Morgan Avenue, married to a lifelong Gamecock fan. And many of our listeners have already bought homes from her and been 100% satisfied with the detail and care she uses. Cindy Searfoss, 864-414-5271, Caldwell Banker Kane in the upstate for your real estate needs. Cool Joe here. Yeah. And when I'm not eating average jambalaya or celebrating endless summer in Destin, I like to eat pimento cheese straight off the bucket. Mmm. And the only pimento cheese I like to eat is from Nana's Porch. It's award-winning, it'll melt in your mouth, it's good on a cracker, it's good in a bowl, it's good on a piece of bread. Also, don't forget, Nana Sports has a hell of a food truck. It's award-winning as well, and they're here for all of your catering needs. So get online, nanasports.com. It's mm-mm good. Coach O, signing off. In the summer, go Tiger. The preferred sign partner of Gamecock Athletics is Signorama Columbia, and they should be yours too. A full-service sign company that handles design, production, install, and service, Signorama Columbia has helped to bring to life the perfect vision for so many all across South Carolina. Owned and operated by proud Gamecock alumni, they can handle all types of signage, including interior and exterior, vehicle graphics, and more. Go to Signorama.com and find the West Columbia location, or call them at 803-407-9284. Bring your brand to life with Signorama Columbia and go game pops. Hey man, are you sick and tired of your business computer guy? Yes, he takes forever to call me back and doesn't always respond to the requests. Yeah, same here. I'm paying him good money. I constantly have issues and I'm worried he's not backing up my network and securing it properly. You know what, Phil? Let's ask Stone Blanton. Hey JC and Phil, if you want a solution to your IT problems, give Heritage Digital a call. Our boy Matt Odom has a low-cost, one-price solution that will get you running right. Call 843-699-1001 or heritagedigital.com and ask for Matt. He will hook you up today and tell them Stone City. This is Cole Messina from the Yardcocks. Electric Bikes of Charleston powers inside the Gamecocks, the show. Be sure to check them out online or in Mount Pleasant. Go Gamecocks.
up, y'all? This is Nick Argulo, and that's Trey Knox. We're here with the warm-up. You want to be perfect. You want to play against somebody. I'm just happy to be here and be here. Fun stuff there from Mount Pleasant on uh, Saturday afternoon. Special thanks to JC and Cam and everybody at Carolina Rise for putting together a wonderful, wonderful event. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. Look, yeah, it was yeah. Really uh, cool. yeah, it was, you know, sometimes you have events that meet your expectations that are lower than your expectations, but – Sometimes you have them that surpass, and, and those definitely did. Uh, and, and they were, they were both events were sort of different. I mean, Columbia was a smaller event, more of an intimate gathering. Uh, the baseball presence there meant a lot, and, and all that good stuff. Um, but then a lot of Gamecock fans uh, at the next one, uh, and that was cool too. And, and the football players. Uh, all of them that were in Columbia, except one, uh, came to Charleston. Some made the trip down on their own, <laughs> uh, yeah. and uh, but they all showed up, and they they were very, uh, you know. Uh, sometimes you worry about players not having a good time. Uh, you know, you got a bunch of middle aged dudes and and their wives, and uh, a bunch of kids running around, but players had a blast. And, uh, uh, yeah, love the electric bikes. Um, I certainly appreciate their presence. Uh, Tony Pope State Farm, who's also a sponsor here on the show, uh, sponsored at Palmetto Autographs. Um, uh, and then, of course, the East Cooper Warhawks. Uh, it's Youth Football League. They came out and had a great time. So certainly uh, certainly a tough uh, – I mean, a, a, not a tough, but a good, good gathering. Jan was at the one in Columbia. Always great to see Jan, and, and he points out Thursdays at four, tough anywhere. Yeah, and you know, uh, but it was fine. I mean, I, I thought both. I thought after Columbia that if we'd have had the same feeling walking away from Charleston, that we would be uh, we'd be in good shape, and we are. So appreciate that. Uh, Craiger talked about the VIP tailgate we have coming up. He said, "Don't do it in North Carolina do it for a home game. <laughs> that could happen. Um, it just depends on kickoff time for Charlotte." Uh, because if it's not noon, if it's not noon, but it's not a night game, if it's a 3.30, that still may be a tough pull. And, and we may push it to like the Furman game for the home opener, something like that at williams Bryce. But uh, as of right now, you know, there, there's a lot of reasons why I want to do it in Charlotte. And um, that, that's the venue until 
it's not. And so, uh, but we're going to do it because we've been promising people we'd do it. And those of you that signed up for the uh, rain check package uh, to the events last week, you get a free ticket uh, uh, to the VIP tailgate. So it, it won't be, it won't be like a fifty dollar event. I think you're you're talking more like ten to get mm-hmm. into it. And uh, those of you that give a certain amount to Carolina Rise every month will get it free. It, it's more of a give back to our members. Hey, come have a good time on us than you know a fundraiser where we're looking to kind of you know pro, uh, make some money, profit, and, and and invest that back into the players. So, looking forward to that, and looking forward to uh, many, many more Carolina Rise events. You know, Carolina Rise. You know, the three revenue streams the collective has now or is, you know, memberships. I know a thing or two about selling memberships on the Internet. I mean, that's been my whole career. Uh, uh, gear, products, you know, things we sell uh, that are tangible and then events. And so uh, two for two so far on events. So hopefully uh, we're not, we're just getting started with all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. I mean, for those that uh, couldn't be there. <clears throat> certainly wish you could have, but those that were appreciate it. Those, as you mentioned, you mentioned the rain check packages, but uh, again, we mentioned it yesterday and, and we'll continue. If you just watched that video, you saw the word spelled out in their family. And that's certainly what it felt like. It really did. It really did. There was a lot of people, my wife and our two kids were there. And, um, you know, obviously I can't just sit there the whole time. There's, a lot of things to do and people to talk to and, and stuff like that. So I got to kind of be moving around and she, she was telling me, uh, uh, yesterday or, um, on uh, Sunday, JC, just how many people walked up and we've seen your photos or your kids and this and the other couldn't have been any kinder. And so that meant a lot to me, but then you, you take the other side of it, it with the, with the players and, um, and how they treated everybody. And I, but I think the thing that I took, um, took away from all this is more than anything was there there were a ton of kids and there was not one who ever had to wait whoever was told no nothing these football players were as good as you could be i mean and um i sent an email yesterday to somebody uh, about this and and i said i i one of the things that i always look for with with college athletes is do you do you live up to hero status or not did you remember when you're that age and uh you're 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 a kid you know these are your heroes if you're a little kid and um and i and i mentioned to this individual i said you know i i think that most all these kids left this event on saturday feeling like their heroes really were who they thought they were and i think that's really what matters so hats off to gamecock football and uh, Coach Beamer and his staff, and um, and uh, and Steve Fink and all those guys in there that work so hard to make sure that this program is is doing things the right way. And boy, are they! That is for dang sure. So really, really thrilled with it. Big Y says he wants to come out to a Garnet Trust event. That's well, cool. You have at it. It's not, uh, not competition. Not, <laughs> yeah. So if, you, if you're trying to get under my skin with that, you're not, because I, yeah. I work closely with those guys, and uh, they're uh, they're good guys too. And we all work together to try to do what's best for the Gamecocks. They put on really good events. They they've had several. Yeah. Um, and so uh, feel free to do that, all of you out there. It's like I said, I was asked about that a couple of times this weekend because, you know those two collectives sort of sprung out of competing websites and the websites compete, you know, and I'd be offended if you started talking about Gamecock central and going to one of their events instead of big spurs, but that's not how it is anymore. You know, uh, with the collectives, I mean, it's, it's about the kids. Everybody kind of works together. It's about the players. And yeah, I am very, I am very thankful for the leadership at Garnet trust and uh, the fact that they're kind of on the same page as we are. So if you're looking uh looking at getting under my skin there, big wash, you're, you're not gonna do that with that. <laughs> no, it's uh it's a, it's about the players. You know, if if you're if you're trying to make this a competition and make and you know, trying to line your own pockets with it, you're you're really screwing up. It'll catch you. It'll catch up. Yeah, it's gonna fail um, if, if, in yeah, Carolina right that's now. That's not what it's it, about. It's gonna fail. It's, there's not enough uh there's still not enough money and support and all that good stuff, and and, and there's not enough word of mouth and all that 
to sustain some kind of crazy competition. And in fact, even at other places, I don't understand the concept of, of competing, uh, you know, as a collective or whatever. It's, it's not, uh, for me, it's not a for-profit business. It's, it's, you know, the more, the better, uh, the more members I have, the more we can do for players. Uh, I think that, um, I think that our, uh, our track record so far in less than a year speaks for itself. And all you got to do, if you enjoy watching the Gamecock baseball team, is look on the field. There you go. Uh, that, that's what Carolina Rise can accomplish, uh, you know, even with limited resources this first year. Uh, imagine how it's going to be, you know, in a couple of years. People, all the time, people worry about, oh, are they going to lose Petri to NIL and all that? No, not if everybody kind of gets together and steps up. I mean, it's, you know, you look at the guys – I mean, there's probably two or three significant players on baseball that aren't on Carolina Rise deals. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are probably a core of those would not be at South Carolina had they not been able, had they not been able to come. And I'm not telling you something Mark Kingston didn't tell you himself on the show. Yeah. Uh, you know, so to, there you go. So if you're looking to do that. It was well, and, I, and I'll say this too. One of the byproducts that I learned is, um, is the, <laughs> the, like that's great for like it's it's a financial thing to help student athletes but i mean if you do it the right way which it was done the right way last week the 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 byproduct of this is getting to know the people that you're pulling for because there 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 are just so many idiots out there that um that you know they stand in the stands and they yell at these people like they're robots and they don't they don't know them and I can tell you, you know, you go meet these kids and you realize real quick they're they're good kids. And you, you you get to sign autographs, you get to talk to them on a personal level. And, JC, that was one of the things that was uh, really at the forefront of the events last week was making sure that there wasn't like a line where you had to stand in to get autographs right and, and a lot of structure where people felt a little bit segregated from the players and, and you know, that type of that type of geofencing it was like, no, nah, we're going to throw them into the mix and let everybody, you know, be able to talk to these guys. And what actually happened, we were all sitting there at the end uh, when when it was pretty much over, JC. We're sitting there with O'Donnell, Fortune, and <laughs> and Mar Marcellus and Juju and Trey Knox and those guys. And we're talking about everything but football, you know, yeah, just both, yeah, hanging. Both events, Trey Knox was the last guy to leave. And what's interesting yeah. about that is – he wasn't really even on like the list. If you guys looked at the list I had, um, I just mentioned to someone at one point, Hey, it'd be nice to train. I should have loved to have him there. He shows up and stays the whole time. He's in there holding court in Columbia. So I'm like, well, good. We got traded Columbia. Well, maybe, maybe not. He'll show up. He comes to Charleston, uh, and talks to everybody there and, and is the last guy to leave. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, and if you listen. Uh-oh. At least once a day. <laughs> i tell you what, Phil, it's due for yeah. a timeout anyway, so let's hit We it. do need to hit the break. Yeah, yeah, last we'll, we'll one. do that. We're teed up by TravelingCountryClub.com. Over 45 courses to play in the Carolinas. TravelingCountryClub.com. We'll be right back. To being back in the pool and boat are quickly approaching. Many of us don't have the time to hit the gym, but Charleston Fitness Equipment can change that for you. Outfit your home with a treadmill, elliptical, or my favorite, a home rower that allows you to row with the pros all over the world. They have free weights, home gyms, flooring, and much more that makes keeping or getting in shape much more convenient. Located in Mount Pleasant, visit charlestonfitnessequipment.com for more. Get in shape like our Gamecocks. Charleston Fitness Equipment, proud partners of Inside the Gamecocks, the show. Are you looking to buy a new home? Kevin O'Connell with Union Home Mortgage is a local mortgage expert and Gamecocks fan servicing North and South Carolina. Whether you're buying a home, building your dream home with new construction, or turning your equity into cash, UHM's world-class service will ensure you find the perfect mortgage to achieve your home ownership goals. Call Kevin at 803-906-0244 or visit UHM.com today. Union Home Mortgage is an equal housing lender. NMLS 2229 LONMLS 1772182. Welcome home. That's what the Gamecocks say. And so does the Barndo Company. 
where they can build your dream home starting as low as $160 per square foot. If you live in the Carolinas, Georgia, or Tennessee, their turnkey process takes just on average and can be custom designed by size and deality. That's the ball. Dominiumco.com, the Barn Doe Company, Gamecock owned and united. Gamecock fans, this is Ethan Petrie from Land Lakes, Florida, and you are listening to the show with JB, JC, and Phil. Go Cox! A deep drive to left. Morgan looks up, and it is gone. Go two is sent to center. And this one is going to be long gone. Shot the opposite field from Casas, and it's gone. It's 2-0. That's driven deep to left. Langford looks up, and it's gone. Ooh, All right, Phil. Everybody. Yeah. JC's still not with us, so we're just going to, you know, kind of roll on at the yeah, end we, of the show. Yeah, we, we can handle this. He lost internet yeah. at his house is what happened. Oh. He oh, lost internet. As he sent me a message. Well, you're on it, but you probably didn't see it. The internet went out at his house. So uh, <laughs> we can we can handle it to, to get it home from here. Um um, but, uh, and, and by the way, thanks again to Matt Vaughn and Sinorama for the, uh, banners. They were, uh, very, 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 very well done. And there's a reason why they're the preferred sign partners of Gamecock athletics, uh, on that note, a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, follow-up comments here and, uh, really certainly appreciate all this stuff. Nice meeting all of you Faust. Great to Great to see you and Jamie and all you guys. P appreciate all y'all being there and saying hello. Um, that was really, really, uh, really fun to meet all of you. But, but certainly glad you could be there to meet the players it, it is really what it came down to. And um, so a lot of good comments on all of that. Thank you so much. Connor asks, is this the year we get Beavs, Cox, in postseason baseball? What seed are y'all going to be? Uh, man, yeah, that you know, who knows, right? Um, I mean, Carolina's – a top eight right now, but we'll see Oregon State um, playing for a host. Uh, they're 16 and 10 and combined Q1, Q2 opportunities, 30 and 13 overall. You know, the issue is, is just the Pac-12 just isn't as strong as the as the SEC. But, boy, I tell you what, Oregon State's a team. Um, the Oregon State is a team that, Phil, I don't care who you are, any year that they're in the postseason, you just – you know, you've seen it before. You don't want to have to run up against them. And uh, they're one of the programs in college baseball that, you know, no matter how they get into the postseason, all that matters is that they're there and they're dangerous when they get there generally. So, um, I don't know. That would be certainly neat to certainly neat to see it. That's it. Get more pub, though, if it was on the football field. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if now if it happens in Omaha, though, that'll be a good story. It'd be a bit more sure. than, you know, just doing it in the regionals. But yeah. it's still like you're this. The committee is going to they're going to be put into an interesting position, assuming that there's not drastic movement in the RPI, because you're it's going to be a damn stretch to get any host, you know, outside any top eight, I should say, outside of the southeast. I mean, you're you're gonna yeah. struggle, I mean, uh, and you're gonna have to probably give excuses and stuff that nobody's gonna believe. <laughs> that well, it's you, gonna be hard for us to swallow. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Um, you know, South Carolina's got the second most Q1 wins in the country, uh, just one behind Vandy. Yeah, but uh, of the teams right now being considered for a top eight national seed, um. Do you know who the team is outside of that group that has the most Q1 wins in college baseball? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Outside of the group that's being considered for a top eight now. there's. Oh, the gotcha, gotcha. I see what you're saying now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hmm. I don't know. Florida? It's the Clemson Tigers. Oh, 12 and 12. 
Matter Q1. of fact, Clemson is 20 and 13 against yep. Q1, Q2. They've only played 12 games against quad three and quad four. Uh, they actually have three more wins, quad one and quad two, than South Carolina does. I mean, they, they've gotten it going. And Clemson, as of today, is in. And they've got ample opportunity. I don't know if they can get there to a top 16. I mean, they, they shouldn't be too far outside right now of that group that's that's being projected as a top 16. But here's the issue for them. They've got Louisville. They got Coastal. Those next four games, like if they go three for three or four in that, and all of a sudden they're at 31 and 18, from there – at Virginia Tech, Upstate, and North Carolina, there just really is not oh, enough yeah, in the RPI. Mm -hmm. You know, so they'll probably have to do some damage in the ACC tournament. But I could tell you, at that point in time, I'm not sure that there'd be a two seed out there that you would want less in your bracket than the Tigers. No, so, no. yeah, he don't I mean, want any. <laughs> no, not hats before off. they play a series, you know. I mean, no. Uh. <laughs> hats off, Derek Backage, man. I mean, he's he's got them going at the right time right now. Um, now, of course, if they lose some games down the stretch, they could also play their way right out of the tournament. I mean, they're it's a very very fragile situation for Clemson baseball. So, what do you make yeah. of Indiana State being so high in the RPI? Yeah. I mean, they're good. Yeah, but they oh, against quad three and four teams. Hell, they've only they've played eleven quad ones, only won two. <laughs> only one two. Yeah, and well, and that's that, that kind of coincides with what we were talking about the other day, and the fact that South Carolina, because they play, they still have so many quad one opportunities left that even when you lose some of these games, it's just not going to bang you. Like mm -hmm. it's just not. You're you've got enough information through the season now, and and your RPI is kind of settled into its ballpark to where I mean. It's just not going to bang you when you lose games as much as it yeah. used to. Nope. And that's yeah. the advantage of it. Schedule. The SEC schedule. <laughs> yeah, that's right. In the Indiana State, though, they, they face nobody outside. I think they got one game left with an RPI under 100. So uh, yeah. I, I just don't see it for them. There'll be a two seed somewhere or three. Yeah. Maybe. But probably. They, they really should. But it's interesting. Like they're, they're the first one outside of the Southeast. Next one, I mean, the next farthest one would be what Dallas Baptist. They've been consistent, yeah. Too, but yeah. Even still, that's you know, I don't know, they're gonna be hard pressed. To <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're well, what, what really helped them was back on April 18th, they thumped Vanderbilt by eight runs. Yep, and that really. Really gave That's him a boost. One quad one win. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. I, 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 it's, this is crazy. <laughs> I think there, there, there's going to be a team. Somebody out west is going to get a regional. Right now, if my money would be on Oregon. Yeah, they're playing better um, than anybody right now. Yeah, Oregon, Stanford's playing for one, but my money right now would, would be on the Ducks. So we'll, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Yeah. All right, thanks to uh, Mike Morgan. <laughs> we spent an hour with him if you missed that conversation. Also, if you missed our hat tip to Carolina Rise, go back and check that out. Uh, tell all your friends. We would really, really appreciate that. And we always appreciate all of you, for sure. We are painted garnet and black by a couple of painters. Let me paint something.com if you're in Georgia or in South Carolina. That's who you want to use, licensed and insured. They're Gamecock owned and operated. Everybody has something that needs to be painted. We know that you do, whether it's the indoors, the outdoors. At least let them quote it for you. They can quote it via pictures. You take pictures, send them to them, they'll quote it. It's that easy. That's what we did at our house. $2,500 in the next high, uh, lowest quote. Unbelievable. Built by the Barndo Co. The Barndominium Co.com. And live from the Sinorama Studios inside the Gamecocks, the show will be back tomorrow at 11, and we'll see you then. <laughs>